let's say day guys and peace be upon you this morning so in this video we're going to learn how to configure odd standby router protocol or in short hsrp okay so before we go deep into this i will open our google spreadsheet and let you know that we are in number 14 under routing technologies part one okay all right so without doing further ado let's understand what hsrp means so i will use this diagram that i just that i drew okay all right so let's assume that site a want to uh, access site b okay and it must pass through um these two routers right then finally to this router and finally it's on site b okay so let's assume that we want a situation whereby when one router goes down okay another path will be used so let's assume primarily our traffic is going through the the first route okay to site b then when the first router goes down or this link is cut off right that all the traffic will be redirected to pass through this router here so what hsrp means is that this is a layer 3 redundancy protocol and it's a cisco proprietary that is used to create a redundancy in the network at the layer 3 level okay and it's a cisco proprietary protocol mainly it's used for cisco products so how does hsrp work well hsrp work based on the concept of the virtual router we have the virtual router we have the active router and the standby router so the active router is the main router through which all the traffic is forwarded to. the backup router or the standby router is that router that acts as the secondary path when the active router fails but what about the virtual router the virtual router is now the default gateway of the inside LAN of this LAN here. That's how we call it the virtual route. And we need to specify it on both the routers so that the routers can know that they share the same virtual route. Okay? All right. And so I will open our Google, uh, I mean our notepad to highlight the steps that we're going to follow to achieve the objective. All right, so configuring HSRP on router. The first step, draw the necessary topology, decorate and comment. As you can see guys, I drew this topology consisting of three routers, one multi-layer switch and two access layer switches. I've used 3650 multi-layer multi switch. I've used 3650 multi-layer switch, okay? 2911 router into 960 access switches so i just wanted to have um, a three tire uh, network topology where we consist of the core layer okay uh, distribution layer and the access layer so in the core layer i wanted to have redundancy and to create redundancy we had to include a protocol which is hsrp all right all right so we are going to implement a uh, redundancy for site A. Okay, we want to we want a situation whereby site A accesses access site B uh, through two paths. Whenever one path fails, the second path picks up. Right? All right. So the second step is to configure a to the routers and specific and specify HSRP parameters on the two routers okay so we need to configure IP address to the routers and specify hsrp parameters on the routers okay all right so the first thing i'll do i'll just configure IP address on this side only first because on this side we have to we have to include hsrp parameters so on this side we just configure IP address only we don't include hsrp uh, parameters okay so I just I have to identify this interface with gig00 and this one is also uh, gig00. So gig00 on this side will take 10, 10, 10, 1. Gig00 on this side will take 10, 10, 10, 5. And this one is gig00, gig10, 10, 10, 10, 2. 
this is big 0 1 10 10 10 10 6 and this is big 0 2 we'll take 1 and 2 168 20.1 okay all right so i'll do it very very fast to save time all right so guys i've configured a PLS for the routers interfaces on the right side but on the left side you don't need to touch it now because we're going to include hsrp parameters okay so i've configured IPLS to only this side only okay only this side i mean okay all right so let's do the same for the oats okay let's finalize host ip address on this head too okay all right so i just do it very very fast save time and all right so that's done so let's return to this side this side so this is the main discussion of today's class hsrp we need to configure ip address to this interface and this interface and also this computer so i will explain some things more remember this interface this interface and this LAN all belong to this network so how are we going to configure it we need to include ip address to this interface and this interface and include hslp parameters so let me show you how to do it before that you have to make sure that you turn the multi-layer switch on remember it's always in shutter i mean it's always turned off by default okay it has no power supply so just click it and drag the ac power supply to the empty, empty slot and close it right okay so we need to configure this interface and this interface with the ip address and include the hsrp parameters so among the hsrp parameters that we're going to include is the virtual route remember i said that this interface and this interface they will share the same virtual route okay so we have to make it we have to make this interface the primary path because you can see it's here virtual route this interface the secondary path standby route okay all right so i click here i just see what which interface this is gig01 so when i click on the router i come to gig01 just come here and say interface gig01 interface gig01 the first thing that we do we assign it ip address but remember i have already did a comment here that our virtual router will have ip address of 10.1 so this one can take uh, 10 dot, from 10.2 10.3 but during hsrp configuration you have to make sure that the the active router takes the highest IP address than the standby router. So in this scenario, 10.1 has been taken by the virtual router. Let the virtual router come in uh, the first IP address, okay? With that will act as the default gateway for this side. So let's say the virtual router has taken this one. So being that this is the active router, it should take high higher than the standby router, okay? Or so we just say IP address. IP address to be one and two. One and two. Dot one sixty eight. Dot ten. Dot three. Okay. Such that this one will take ten dot two. Okay. Then IP uh, a subnet pass of two five five. Dot two five five. Dot two five five. Dot zero. Okay. You eat enter. Okay. And uh, you can see it's down. Let's say no, that will say it later. Then now this is where you include HSRP parameters. The first thing that we do, we create what's called HSRP group. Okay. So we can just say how do we create a HSRP group? We can say standby. We just say standby. Standby. Then you give a group number. You can say let's say this is a group number thirty something like that. Okay. Right. Then after giving a group number, or you can just say standby, then you try to query. Okay. Then you can see group number, you can give a group from 0 to 1495. So in this case, we can use 7 group, uh, let's use group 5. Okay. Then just query again. What's next? After you query, after you query, uh, this is what is included. You can give the priority level you can give the preempt 
uh, or the IP, which or the IP that will represent the virtual router's IP. So we just say standby five, the group number five. Then we give the priority. Priority. Priority to be. Let's query. You see, you can give a value between zero to two fifty five. So remember, the router with the highest IP address and the router with the highest priority is the one that becomes the active router. So in this case, I'm going just to give a standard priority, which is always 100 for this route, okay? Then you hit enter. The first step, give IP address. The second step, give the priority, I mean, give the, star, the group number and the priority level. The third step is now where you include the virtual router. So just say standby, standby five still, IP address to be, IP address to be, uh, IP address of the virtual router, which is 102.168.10.1. You hit enter, then no shut because you can see it's shut down. So just say no shut and do right. That's all. That's all about HSRP. So let's learn it more on the route on the second router. Just click on the second router, and uh, first I identify which interface this one. This is gig zero one. So when we go here, I enable config t interface gig zero slash one. The first thing we assign it IP address. And remember we said that it's only the active router that we assign with the highest IP address with the highest priority, standby priority, okay? So let's say hey, IP address, uh, 102.168.10.2, because this one, this one was 10.3, active router. Now standby router B, 10.2, 255.255.255.255.255. And you hit enter. The second step, you give the group number. The group number should be the same here. Okay. Standby group number. You say standby. Standby uh, five. Our group number was five. Then what do you do now? You give the priority. 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 Remember the priority here was one hundred. So the router with the highest priority becomes the active router, the main path. So let's make this one priority of 90 so that it becomes the secondary path and you just hit enter. Then the last step is to specify the virtual router. We just say standby. Standby IP to be 102. I uh, standby 5. Sorry, you have to include this group number. Standby 5 IP to be 102.168.10.1. And you hit enter, exit, and you do right. All right. So I forgot to turn this interface up. So we just go there and turn it up. No shut. And you do right. Exit. So let's just give it some time and test if HSRP has been formed between this router and this out okay guys so finally uh this interface has turned up and you can see the state was changing from standby to active then finally to standby so if you can just verify and just say show standby standby query standby yeah brief that's all you can see that gig zero one group five with priority of 90 it's state of standby okay and the active router is 10.3 which is the ip address of this router and our virtual ip virtual router is 10.1 very simple so what do we do let's go to these computers and configure ip addresses so when i go here there's something that i want to, i want to explain just say uh, uh, configure IP address 102.168.10.10. Okay, all right. 
then when it comes to default gateway you give the IP address of the virtual router we didn't configure the virtual router but it's specified the virtual we assume that is there so we just configure the IP address of the virtual router remember this one is 10.3 this is 10.2 and our virtual router is 10.1 so we give the virtual router as the default gateway okay all right so when you go here again we do the same that's all that's all about hsfp so when i go back to a notepad you can see um configure appearance to the hosts to make and make such site a LAN to use virtual router as the default gateway i've just done that then finally configure ospf to advertise routes so guys let's do ospf very very fast remember this router is going to advertise how many networks this one and this one this one is going to advertise this one and this one and this one is going to advertise three this one this one and this one so let's do it very very fast to save time start with this one And do right so if you can just say do show ip ospf neighbors you can see they have two neighbors 1.1.1 and 2.2.2 and the state is full they are full they are okay all right so when you go back to a notepad ping enters route from a to b so I'm going to ping this PC which was uh, 20.10. So let's ping 20.10. Ping. Reset. Reset. 192.168.20.10. So you see the paths? You see the paths? The first path is the active router. It goes through the active router, this IP address, okay? All right. So when you go back to our notepad, disconnect link through the active router and ping again. So I'm going to disconnect this link. Intentionally, I'm just going to dis disconnect that link, yes. So let's go to the same router and try to ping again. So you can see, it's pinging successfully the first time i tried to ping it failed uh, maybe it was still est establishing paths so the second time i tried to ping it went successful okay so let's try to trace out again so to test out trace route so you see it's going through 10.2 the first time you could see it was going through 10.3 because that was the primary path now that the primary path failed, it has to go through 10.2, which is our backup path. So I'll connect this router, I'll connect the link again, and wait until it turns green, then try to do the same. So let's just give it some time. Okay, now the link is up. Let's go to the same computer and try to ping again. See, it's now going through. 10.3 initially it was 10.2 so basically guys we've achieved redundancy in our network at the layer 3 level through the configuration of our standby router protocol so that's all that's all about this video and when we meet next we're going to handle a very very important topic hsrp with multiple vlans very very important so thank you so much guys please subscribe to this channel like this video share with friends and let's check in in the next video. Bye.